This is your WCIA3 forecast first, sponsored by CIBM Bank. We've got some snow falling across parts of central Illinois here late this Saturday evening, including Pontiac. That's one of the snowy spots. You look close to the ground down there. Actually, it looks like the grass is covered. And we've had a few reports of some slick roads from Pontiac to the north and east there. Uh, some heavier snow has tried to mix in there across the Illinois River. Seems like so far we're still a little warm for a lot of us here. That time running out for a quick transition to some rain and snow. It's still 40 in Champaign here. 40 in Effingham. You can see that colder air to the northwest. Galesburg, 32. 39 in Springfield. Coming up, we've got that rain and snow continuing the next couple of hours. We'll talk about where we think there might be a little bit of accumulation. Lingering winter in the seven-day forecast, but yes, a quick warm-up also in store. We'll tell you when we might get to 60 back in the board. Won't last long, though, with the extended outlooks. I've got all of those details and more coming up as WCIA 3 News at 10 starts right now. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. Vitally important. I can't tell you how many people's lives have been saved by them. He says this time of year is one of the best times to check them. You can't predict when a fire will happen, and every minute counts when one does. Good evening, and thank you for being here for your local news at 10. I'm Amanda Brennan. And I'm Chance Dickwin Marley is off tonight. Tonight, as your heads hit the pillow, your clock shouldn't be the only things you're checking and changing ahead of daylight savings. Firefighters want to take an extra few minutes to think about fire safety in your home as well. John Hawking with Champaign Fire knows it's something people can easily forget about. He says smoke detectors can help prevent fires from growing and help save a life. If you have something burning in your kitchen and hear a beeping sound right away, you can stop a problem in its tracks. Nowadays, there are new detectors with batteries designed to last 10 years. We've told you before that there's a new state law for this year that requires those in homes. But that doesn't mean you should stop checking them, even if the detector says 10 years. Um, there should be a test button on there. Make sure it actually alarms. Um, we just assume, but it's always good to check it. You never know if there's something wrong with that detector. So yeah, daylight savings time is a really good time to make sure you test that detector, make sure the battery's good, or make sure it's it's within its 10 years, and, uh, and just any fire safety. And that includes creating an escape plan from your house, especially knowing how you may have to get out from a second or third floor. Hawking says you can put a foldable ladder next to your windows on those higher levels. He also suggests checking the lint in your dryer vents, and that's often forgotten. Along with smoke detectors, you should also keep an eye on your health as you adjust to the time change. Your physical clocks are adjusting, and so is your body's internal clock. A sleep specialist with OSF Healthcare says it's always hard for your body to spring forward, but people with dementia and Alzheimer's feel it's the most. She says that she's because that's already they've already had a hard time maintaining their time clock, and this is just another challenge. Light is our timekeeper, and um, it is the strongest timekeeper, and that's what keeps us um, going. So, you know, morning light, the first, you know, in the morning is what's really, really important for us, um, you know, to, to really get our day going. And I mean, we all know that, you know, bright lights in the morning really can affect our mood, have a good day, get it started. And when that sunlight isn't there, it's harder to get, get your body in sync. She says to make it easier, change your sleep schedule gradually. Try to go to bed 15 minutes sooner for the next couple of days while you're adjusting. We told you a few weeks ago about a big cat in central Illinois. A cougar migrated through the Great Plains and ended up in a Springfield neighborhood. That animal will soon have a name. He's a one-year-old male that was captured and radio collared in 2022 while in Nebraska. People in Illinois have been voting on the name the last few weeks, and you still can as well. We have information and a link so you can vote on our website, WCIA.com. The IHSA State Basketball Championships wrapped up today in Champaign. Game started on Thursday and continued into the weekend. Teams and fans packed the State Farm Center. There you can see on your screen it was a good crowd. The championship games were played earlier today. We caught up with some fans and a player who says it was just a great experience. It's good. It's a good atmosphere just to be here at State Farm Center and watching two of the best players uh, teams play in, in state championship, and I think it's pretty cool. And not having to focus on everything, just going out there, being myself, giving the best that I can be, is just kind of peaceful in a way. Looks like it was a great turnout at this year's championship games. Turning to our eye on health, air pollution could be a danger to your heart. Plus, the FDA just announced new mammogram requirements. Michael George has some of this week's top health stories. 
The FDA is updating its mammogram standards to help better prevent, detect, and treat cancer. Under the new rules, providers will be required to notify women if they have dense breast tissue. About half of all women over the age of 40 have dense breasts, which can make it harder to detect breast cancer. New research shows the Omicron variant of the coronavirus is much less likely to lead to long COVID than the strain that circulated at the beginning of the pandemic. A Swiss study found that healthcare workers infected with the original strain were up to 67% more likely to experience long COVID than those who had never been infected. But there was no similar increase for healthcare workers infected with Omicron. And there's new evidence that the air you breathe can affect your heart health. Researchers tracked hospital admissions for cardiovascular disease in 70 Chinese cities and found higher admission rates in places with elevated ozone levels. They're concerned air pollution from climate change could make the problem worse. Those are some of the week's top health stories. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Check this out. Today, the Chicago River went green. It's part of a half-century-old St. Patrick's Day tradition. Thousands of fans gathered downtown to watch, including Chief Meteorologist Kevin Lighty, who captured this video. Several other parades were held across the city. Tomorrow, festivities continue with the Northwest Side Irish Parade and South Side Irish Parade. For a list of fun Irish celebrations happening closer to home here in central Illinois, check out our website, WCIA.com. From green rivers to chilly lakes, I'm sure one of the last things you're thinking about is jumping into water like this. But for nearly 200 people this morning in Muhammad, that was their main focus. Today was the polar plunge at Lake of the Woods, all benefiting Special Olympics Illinois. I was there this morning, and here's how things unfolded. <laughs> Hundreds are taking the plunge <laughs> and braving the cold temps. It's so sick and cold. I'm like, I can't, let's do this. But I got this. It's all for Special Olympics and part of the law enforcement torch run polar plunge in Muhammad. Lindsay Brownfield is a special education teacher. She raised $3,500 this year and knows firsthand how it helps the athletes. Um, the training, the participation, the transportation, everything you could think of that comes with competing um, at a bigger level, this money goes directly to that effort. And she was one of many cheering on the people getting in the water, and Morgan Quigley was one of them making the jump. What's the best part about today? Uh, going in the water. <laughs> Micah McMahon with the Champaign County Sheriff's Office was another one going in. Um, I think it's, it means everything. I, I've gotten an opportunity to see these athletes in action, and it's just amazing the things they can do. Bridget Taylor, a special ed teacher in Villa Grove, says it's the athletes that keep her coming back. Right now they're going to see that we're all together as a team and we're all freezing together. So just seeing that we all have came together for this special cause is really good for them. McMahon says the kids inspire him and they're not the only ones encouraging him to dive in each year. I love the, the camaraderie with the, the community, uh, the local law enforcement that comes out to support this from all different departments. He says the anticipation is the worst part. And after that, uh, once you're actually in that water, you realize this is what you're doing it for and why you're doing it, and, you just, and it's a great thing. And he knows it helps thousands of athletes in the state, but it goes beyond that as well. Um, it helps them so they can be able to just learn the confidence they need to succeed in the tough world that we live in. And athletes like Emerson Yort are thankful. <laughs> they are actually challenging us to be good, humble, and kind, and people are our feelings have to be heard. So that's how we love to be here. Today, the group and supporters raised just over $47,000 for Special Olympics. There's still time to donate if you want to help out. and We have a link to that on our website, WCI.com. Still ahead, stocks dropping on Wall Street. That's after a bank collapse in California. How it's affecting other businesses, that's next. But first, turning to a familiar face, Jacob Dickey, who is typically not on the weekends, but filling in for Seth. What's the weather like out there? Well, we've got a little bit of snow sneaking on through some spots out here. Uh, we take a look at those road conditions. They're okay here. I don't expect really any problems overnight tonight, but a few slick spots reported across Livingston County. A little batch of snow there, but for the most part, just nuisance snow. I'll tell you why I call it nuisance snow coming up right after this.
in Urbana. Now, Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. Here's the look outside in Champaign. We'll keep our eyes to the sky and see if we can't get a little bit of snow to fly here. Not all that uncommon in the month of March. You can see temperature at 40. That wind is out of the east here. That 40 degree temperature will help out. We'll zoom to the north here. Gibson City, there's been some snow falling. I can see it in the lights here. Uh, looks like some flakes coming on down. And then uh, we'll even head over to the west there towards, uh, how about Lexington? That's I-55 northwest of Bloomington. Looks like maybe a little bit there. We've seen some in Pontiac. One of the issues we have is it's so warm here in Central Illinois, the snow is able to mix in pretty quickly, but the moisture is fleeing as well. And so a quick round of some light snow, even been a little bit of mix reported further to the south. There looks like there's some of that snow now from Gibson City up towards Lexington and Pontiac, light to moderate in nature. Rain for most all of us. We've had reports along Route 9 from Bloomington to Paxton of some of that snow mixing on in. Same down here. Could be a little bit of mix somewhere, making it down our warm layer of air at the surface. Very shallow here, 40 degrees, but you go up just a little bit and it cools off pretty quickly here. 35 in Bloomington, 33 in Watsika. Uh, maybe that warm air will save some of us uh, from what I call nuisance snow. If you're hoping for more snow, this isn't the event. If you don't have, uh, you know, you don't want to see the snow, well, then you see it flying and it's a nuisance that way as well here either way. Can't win, can we? Lows tonight are down into the 30s here. We'll continue to watch as the main round of moisture exits. Still, though, north of I-74 could be some slight snow falling as we go into late tonight into tomorrow morning. I wouldn't expect much from it here. And then through the day Sunday as well, we could likely see some spotty snow showers and flurries on Sunday, Sunday night, even into Monday here as it looks a little more winter-like in the forecast moving forth. As far as any sticking snow here, there's been some reports of some slushy accumulation on grassy and elevated surfaces, and if it comes down heavy enough, maybe it get, get a slick spot somewhere. But overall, not much. We'll say up to an inch north of I-74. There'll be a lot of us in this area that miss out on this particular event as we uh, will see it be very much just hit and miss across parts of the region. Warming up tomorrow, too. Any snow that does fall will melt pretty quickly. Temperatures by tomorrow into those 40s out there. 43 for Tolono, 43 in Gibson City. Uh, we'll be at 41 over towards Bloomington, 43 Mount Pulaski and Mount Zion, 46 in Stewardson, Chatham at 43. I've got 46 in Arcola, 43 in Mattoon, 46 for Toledo. Future track shows here this quick little clipper system sliding on through that low hangs around on the back side there. Might get a little bit of light snow showers here for Sunday and Monday. By Tuesday, the sunshine returns. We'll look forward to that. And milder weather into Wednesday and Thursday as another strong low pressure approaches. Then by the end of the week, we think by the second half of Thursday into Thursday night, particularly lingering into Friday, likely rain. And again, maybe on the backside, if we get the cold air to time out, right, could be a little bit of cooler weather and some snow here. Want to mention this quick warm up, though. 53 for Wednesday. I'm at 59 now for Thursday. I think temperatures will be falling, though, as we go through the day on Friday. With that warm weather, though, look what the wind has to do. We have some blustery winds as we go Thursday and Friday with that wind turning to the north and west on the back side. Cold air will be short-lived. 8 to 14 day outlook still looking colder here across the region. Tonight down to 33. We've got a little bit of light accumulation in spots from rain and snow. Remember those clocks tonight? Here's the impacts of it. You set your clock an hour forward. Sunset today was at 5.55. Tomorrow, 6.56 p.m. We'll have some daylight here during the 6 o'clock newscast of the week. Flurries and breezy for Monday. 39 for the high. Warming up to the 50s by Wednesday. There's the breezy weather with some showers Thursday, especially I think Thursday night and Friday. And then temperatures beyond that. Certainly looking colder. Amanda, do you like the cold weather sticking around or do you, are you ready for the warmer weather? Oh, warm weather all the way. Yeah, I think Hi. a lot of folks are in spring break this week and they're thinking, where's the spring weather? We'll get a little bit at the end of the week, but a little quick blip. Overall, the extended outlooks look like the cooler air will stick around and win out. Looking That's forward right. to those warmer temps. Soon. <laughs> Soon. Right. Still ahead, one gym in Fort Myers, Florida is helping kids for free and it's making a big difference. Find out what instructors are teaching them and how it's impacting them. That's coming up after the break.
in an Urbana. Live from your local news leader, Marley Capper, Chance Stakeland, Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with forecaster Seth Bolnoff and Andy Olson on sports. You're watching WCIA 3 News at 10. One Florida gym is helping kids for free, making a difference in the lives of at-risk students. It's creating change by teaching boxing skills. A teacher says it helps get aggression out and build positive character. Correct. The gym helps kids keep out of trouble and leads them towards graduation. Mario Nunez is a different person compared to where he was a year ago. I was kind of close to uh, killing myself. I was a bad alcoholic. Now it's been a whole year since I've drank. A big part of that change, he says, his nights been at SJC Boxing, where young men and women of all ages come to work up a sweat. Founder Steve Canton says they hone their fighting skills and build character all at the same time. And there's a lot of problems in today's world, and so we want to change that just a little bit and give the kids an alternative where they can learn old-time values, they can appreciate hard work and good payoffs for themselves. The program is free of charge, which makes a big difference for boxers like Brandon Garcia, who's put in extra effort to chase his dreams. I would have to run five miles to the bus stop, the lead train, take it to Edison, then run to the gym. The payoff, he says, is worth it. You're at work, you're frustrated, you come here, you release everything. It's like, a, it's like therapy in a way. Whether they're hoping to make boxing a career or they just want to come for the workout and camaraderie, the boxers tell us SJC is more than just a gym. Everybody out training right now is family. Uh, Coach Steve, Coach John, they're all like family to me. I couldn't ask for more. Taylor Wirtz, CBS News, Fort Myers, Florida. In other national news, a key California bank is collapsing and the stocks dropped on Wall Street yesterday. Silicon Valley Bank is a partner for many tech companies and startups. Now regulators are seizing some of its resources in the largest bank failure since 2008. CBS's Bradley Blackburn has more. The sudden collapse of Silicon Valley Bank had tech CEOs and founders standing outside bank branches looking for answers about their funds. I'm pretty concerned. If you're all here and things are locked up, it's very difficult to operate your company. The country's 16th largest bank with more than $200 billion in assets was shut down by regulators yesterday due to inadequate liquidity and insolvency. The bank was squeezed by rising interest rates and shrinking deposits from tech clients. The Treasury Secretary reacted on Capitol Hill. When banks experience financial losses, it is and should be a matter of concern. The FDIC insures accounts up to $250,000, but many clients have far larger deposits that they now can't access. Um, we wired out the money yesterday, but Silicon Valley Bank did not honor our wire. Stefan so, Kolb, CEO of a Seattle-based tech startup, is concerned for his company and the wider economy. We can't pay our vendors today. What happens when tens of thousands of companies can't pay their vendors anymore because they don't have cash in the bank? Stocks were down on the news with investors fearing more financial instability. Hey, in Washington, the White everybody. House worked to calm concerns. Our, our banking system is fundamentally different because of the, the changes that we put in place in 2008. For example, they have to hold more capital. They undergo stress tests. So we know that we had to build more resilience. The FDIC says insured deposits will be available by Monday when Silicon Valley Bank reopens for business. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. And as for uninsured deposits, more than $250,000. The FDIC says account holders will get some funds within the next week and get a certificate for the remainder of their deposits. Some tech leaders are already asking for a federal bailout. Bryce joins us now with Sports Selection Sundays tomorrow. The Illini are waiting to see where, the, where they will be playing, right? That's right. You got your orange on, right? Yes. She's a huge Illini fan. Obviously, <laughs> Illinois looking to see where they're going to end up tomorrow. We'll have more on that coming up next in sports.
in an Urbana. From the official television station of Illini Sports, this is WCIA Gray Sports and your Illini Nation. After being one and done in the Big Ten tournament, Illinois men's basketball are moving forward from their loss to Penn State and focusing on the NCAA tournament. After the Penn State game, Illinois head coach Brad Underwood said their offense was there, but they are figuring out how to win when shots aren't falling. Neil and I have some NCAA experience with Matthew Meyer winning a national championship at Baylor and Taryn Shannon Jr. at Texas Tech having a good run before coming to Illinois. Neil and I will need to lean on their senior leadership that helped them already in big games this year to make it past game one of the Big Dance. We've beaten UCLA, we've beaten Texas, we've beaten uh, a lot of good teams in this league. Um, I think there's plenty there. The NCAA tournament becomes becomes a grind, and you got to have guys who can make baskets. We do have that. Get back in the gym, uh, take the days off that we have, uh, use that and watch film, uh, see how we can get better, and just get prepared for March. Uh, the lights will be brighter. and. If we, if we lock in and play defense the way I know we can, uh, we'll be fine. Illinois will know their destiny with the NCAA tournament tomorrow for Selection Sunday. That airs at 5 p.m. here on WCIA after the Big Ten Tournament Championship game. And experts are trying to predict where Illinois will end up. CBS Sports Bracketology has Illinois in the South Bracket ranked 10th. ESPN's Bracketology has Illinois in the West at number 9 facing number 8 Arkansas. Either way, Illinois could be in a tough spot in their first game if ranked around 9th. And here's a look at the Big Ten brackets. Illinois losing in the second round to Penn State. Ohio State making a nice run in the semifinals, but Purdue takes down Ohio State Buckeyes on their fourth game straight. Boilermakers win this one 80-66. And for the other spot in the championship, Penn State taking down Indiana 77-73. The championship game is at 2.30. You can watch here on CBS. And high school state basketball finals were happening at the State Farm Center today. The Illini recruiting Cole Serta with Bloomington Central Catholic versus DePaul College Prep for 2A. Serta with the ball, quick step back with the three 18 points for him today. This time, Serta in a very similar spot here. He's going to juke out his defender with yet another three, four for 14 from beyond the arc, seven for 19 from the field. But DePaul's preps, PJ Chambers going to hit a three, 11 for him today. DePaul Prep takes first place in the 2A state championship, 65-41. And here's a look at the rest of the results from the high school state tournament. And 1A Waterloo's Jabot Catholic beats Scales Mound, 65-45. For 3A, Metamora beats Simon, 46-42. And in 4A, Monet takes home first place over Benet Academy, 59-42. A lot of scores, a lot of, a lot of basketball going on right now. So I think everyone's just curious where Illinois women and men will end up in the NCAA selection show tomorrow. For sure. Bryce, thank you so much. We'll be right back.
together. One more thing to share with you tonight. That's meteorologist Jacob Dickey getting a pie in the face. The Descola FFA chapter held their alumni pie auction today. The FFA alumni and officers had to raise $1,000 for the privilege of throwing a pie in his face. Hey, Jacob? It was fun. You can see the tie I've got on here. Sitting. Yeah, actually, Pam Reese, Robert Reese's wife, got okay. me that tie. Her and her kids, uh, Michelle and Michael, were there. So going to wear a blueberry pie tie after they, they sent a cherry pie in my face. But it was fun. It was you a good time. washed it off. I did, yeah. I had like 15 minutes to get home and, and show. Was that, your, was that your first pie in the face? It is here, but I think there's a lot of people with the weather recently. Yeah. They probably want to throw some pies at us too, right? <laughs> We've uh, been a little cooler than we'd like to be through spring break. There's a seven-day forecast for you. Breezy weather is coming again with a warm-up. It's going to be warm and a bit windy to the end of the week. Let's just look for that, right? 59 on Thursday. Just forget the other stuff. Right? Right? Right. Yeah. Hey, I agree with you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for watching. Thanks Have a good night. Yep. We'll see you tomorrow.